Good morning to the CSRD Everything You Need to Know webinar. We're seeing everyone dropping in, um, so uh, let's uh, give them uh, a second uh, to, uh, to drop in. Um, my name is uh, Skadi Mobius and this is my colleague Hi, I'm Jesse. <laughs> Jesse Brunsdale, and we are here today to tell um, you a little bit more about CSRD. Um, my background is in the corporate uh, management uh, finance uh, um, section and uh, grew into like the sustainability part and innovation part and guided uh, big names like IKEA, Dawa Ekber, it's a UN uh, food program um, with their visions and structures. And uh, yes, is absolutely the man for the for the CSRD and the <laughs> materiality analysis in this part, uh, I have a background in the energy transition. Yes, and he um, dove completely into the ESRS indicators uh, since since a half year, and we are guiding um, Dutch Flower Group since a year through um, the CSRD process with their 13 companies. So we share our lessons learned and everything uh, with you today and also spill some secrets on how you can move forward. So if you could um, write in the chat um, who you are and what are you expecting from the session today so that we can uh, take it a little bit along and, and can include it in our um, yeah, uh, answers to you and what we uh, will present uh, to you today. I uh, would say that we directly dive a little bit into the presentation. Just give you a second a little bit in the chat to write your name down, what you expect. So let's uh, see a little bit what's, uh, what's coming up um to see how how things are, are moving i you guys need so a little bit moment probably to like write everything in the chat so i guess i will directly share our presentation Perfect. So what we will dive uh, into um, today is what is CSRD, the CSRD timeline, what are the dates a little bit that uh, you can expect in the next year, in the next uh, two years, what are to come, which companies are involved, why, do you, why is CSRD coming, our eight phases we developed to tackle CSRD for all kinds of companies which are not dependable on changes in the process, they're really like the general steps you need to uh, need to have. Then the frequently asked questions about materiality analysis, ESRS indicators, our impact dashboard that we are developing with our clients within the process of making them CSRD ready, our lessons learned, and also an example timeline for your company so that you know how long a little bit the phases will take and why it is really important to really start with that. Um, to get you started, why um, are we doing this? It's because um, we are absolutely passionate to make sustainability for companies much practical and easier to tackle. Like our mission is it till 2025 to um, make a sustainable sustainability step for people and companies easier so that 1 million people are influenced by our easy to use tools and practical guidelines and actions that sustainability um, can I just go for okay. yeah. um, so that you really can dive into the your company and all the nitty gritty stuff with oh, these policies and all of these can be uh, basically uh, yeah uh, be done with templates and that you really focus on creating the impact but are not busy with structures and everything. So I would say let's dive right into what is CSRD and what are the timelines. Yes sir. Yes all right. So we start with uh, a general introduction about, about what is CSRD. You probably heard a little bit about it that's why you're here. Um, and right now it's still fairly big, but we'll try to break it down into little pieces for you. So first of all, what is CSRD? Uh, CSRD is the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. It's a new law from the European Union that applies to all medium and big companies. Um, when are you a medium or a big company? It, that is when um, you uh, follow two of the three um, following rules. You have more than 250 employees, you have a total balance of 20 million or a total revenue, uh, a yearly revenue of 40 million. And CSRD is basically 
mostly about non-financial reporting. So we have additional reporting, uh, which is the financial reporting, which is what you do every year. Um, and we have the non-financial reporting. And in the next steps, we'll take you along to see uh, what the non-financial reporting exactly is. Yes. Um, so one, one extra little introduction about why the Union um, introduced the CSRD. <clears throat> it's for a few reasons. First of all, um, it replaces a lot of existing non-financial reporting targets. Uh, that were all individual. These are now bundled into the CSRD. Um, furthermore, obviously, it is to achieve the Green Deal targets, uh, like from the Paris Agreement. Um, and in addition, it also creates transparency. Uh, it uh, provides investors with extra insights into the opportunities and risks of uh, companies. And it provides uh, clear reporting guidelines, because previously, any company could um, report on sustainability in the way they wanted. Uh, it was a free format, and now the CSRD gives a clear, uniform format. So uh, let's start with a, a timeline. Uh, when does CSRD start, actually? Um, the first uh, reporting drafts were made in uh, 2022, actually a few months ago, um, and uh, it will be finalized uh, in a few months, in Q1 uh, 2023. As you can see, uh, the timeline is pretty short because in 2024 already, uh, companies have to start implementing and have to start measuring uh, these indicators. And they have to report in 2025. For the uh, medium and small listed companies, um, reporting has to start in 2026. And the first report has to be done in 2027. And from then on, it will probably be a yearly report. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's give you a little bit of practical insight on how are these preparation phases. So we hear it's like a, in 2024, you have to prepare. It seems like still some time and there is a little buzz about like uh, uh, the corporate sustainability reporting directive indicators also. So what, what have you what have you got to what have you go to go through to actually make uh, this happen to uh, become uh, compliant to CSRD? Um, by working with the Dutch Flower Group together, we came up with these eight phases, which are in general phases. They are um, absolutely um, independent from all the changes because these are the general steps your company has to go through in order to make it possible to report for CSRD. So the first step is um, the project preparation. Then you um, go to the current company KPIs and um, go to the materiality, um, the double materiality analysis you can, uh, or you have to basically um, undertake um, and analyzes and get your KPIs out of it. Then go to the ESRS indicators. Yes, I will just uh, in a bit tell you a little bit more about these. Um, but then also connect these KPIs and measure them. Then you obviously have to, with the data definitions and everything, measure these KPIs. And um, what we definitely include is to create your own impact dashboard so that you can steer your companies on the um, KPIs, which are most important to you. But, and then when you measured everything, took everyone along, created all the KPIs, then you're able basically to uh, report for CSRD. These are the general eight phases your company has to go through in order to uh, yeah, comply to uh, CSRD and to prepare for it. But the uh, most frequently asked questions about uh, these steps is definitely about um, the double uh, materiality analysis, the ESRS indicators, which are not completely fixed yet, and um, our impact dashboard, um, uh, which we create with our clients together. Yes, can you tell us more about it? <laughs> <laughs> I can, yes. Because we do get a lot of questions about these topics, yeah. uh, especially about double materiality and what's the difference between double and single materiality or what even is materiality. Materiality, materiality basically is the impact uh, your company has or your company can have on its environment. Uh, and in this case, we mean a planet and society. Um, so that is your um, the impact of your company, but double materiality works two ways because planet and society can also have an impact on your organization. 
Uh, this can be done through different things, uh, CO2 taxing. Um, we, we already see it happening um, a lot. So basically that is the core of double materiality is the impact of your company on planet and society and the impact of planet and society on your company. So how do we measure this? Uh, luckily we don't have to figure out uh, it all by ourselves. Uh, this process has been done, done for quite some time. Um, so what we do is uh, we start with a stakeholder analysis. We figure out external stakeholders and internal stakeholders uh, for the external stakeholders, it's important that you have a diverse group of stakeholders. So figure out who is in your supply chain, figure out who is in your financial bubble. Um, what are NGOs, for example, around your company or certification uh, um, institutions? <clears throat> Make a list of all your stakeholders around your company and start interviewing them. Um, we do this in two ways. We start with a, a general questionnaire survey because it's easier to uh, interview a group, big group of people. And then once we know the most important topics, the most important materialities, uh, we'll do some qualitative interviews. Yeah, and we developed our own materiality analysis tool so that you have all the data um, automated, automated basically together so that you don't have to um, do the analysis of the materiality part on your own. Obviously, the double materiality analysis uh, needs the extra interviews. Uh, yes, it just talked about. Yeah, but it, it saves a lot of time. Yeah. Yes, perfect. The second question that's often asked is, what is ESRS? And I can understand why, because there's a lot of abbreviations, CSRD, ESRS, and basically ESRS are the way you have to report for CSRD. So these are the European Sustainability Reporting Standards. You have to report according to these standards. Yeah. Um, and basically, it's just another bunch of KPIs that's going to have to be measured. <laughs> it basically included or basically on top of the KPIs you are having and what comes out of the materiality analysis. Yeah, I think it could be interesting to go just a little back to this step mm -hmm. um, and show after the project preparation, we have the first three steps, which are basically all about mm -hmm. gathering new KPIs. Uh, gathering your current KPIs, what is your company already measuring? Yeah. Second one is materiality analysis. Out of this, what I just explained, is uh, are extra KPIs coming. And then we have the ESRS, which are the European indicators that I will talk about right now. It's basically um, just another bunch of reporting standards from the European Union uh, that need to be measured. It's quite extensive. Um, as you can see, there's three uh, groups with all different categories in it. Um, and I would say for every category, there's about five to 15 standards that need to be measured. How many are there at the moment? Um, um, the complete list? Yeah, about 130. 130 indicators, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, and c c measuring CO2 is one of this 130. So basically, it's not that like uh, all the little steps of measuring CO2 are within the 130. No. Measuring CO2 on scope one, two, and three is like one of these elements. Yeah, it's very interdisciplinary. Yeah. Um, I will walk you through a few examples. We'll start left yeah. top. Uh, ESRS uh, E1, for example, is about climate change. Obviously, this one is about measuring uh, CO2 and CO2 equivalents. Um, and the second one is about pollution. It's about other uh, chemicals and uh, pollution. Um, the third one, water and marine resources, uh, is about water usage uh, and also materials that you can use from the water, like uh, rare earth materials uh, and, and these, these kind of things. Um, E4 is the impact on biodiversity and ecosystems. Well, in the Netherlands, we just had the big debate about stickstuff and we know uh, the local impact it can have. Uh, as you can see, it's quite extensive. Yeah. Um, E5 is about circular economy. One example could be if you're a production company, uh, what amount of your products are reusable? What kinds of plastic are you using? Are they reusable? Um, when we go to the social part, it's uh, a lot of metrics about your own workforce, uh, about gender, about contracts, about illness. Um, when we go to S2, it's about the workers in the value chain. Uh, it's providing information on them. Um, you can give policies. Uh, it's not mandatory to have a certain policy. It's more important that you describe uh, what policy you have on this topic. Yeah. 
So some of the 130 are like really like KPIs and measurements like really extensively. And some of them are, for example, like uh, human resources, like FTEs you have to uh, dedicate to specific elements or for example, like um, policies. Yeah. yeah, many are also very descriptive. Um, when we go to S3, uh, it's the effect on uh, local communities. Yeah. And S4 is uh, about uh, information about consumers. Yeah. Um, and then the last one, governance, when we go to ESRS G1, uh, it's about governance structures. How do you um, manage risks? Uh, do you have checks and balances internally? Um, it's about describing the board as well. And then the last one, ESRS G2, um, if you made it so far, <laughs> good job. <laughs> it's about uh, business conduct. And it's also very descriptive. Uh, some things that you have to describe, for example, are uh, whether your company has a whistleblower policy or not, um, or whether there's any active lawsuits going on. And this is basically uh, what needs to be reported from the European Union. Yeah. And uh, you have to report on all of the elements where you also are on all of the companies you also include in your financial statements. So they all need to be um, included in these non-financial reporting. Um, these 130 indicators are is the fullest of the indicators next year in June, like yes, I already said or showed you in the in the timeline. Um, there will be sector specific um, um, guidelines. So that is at least what uh, the European financial reporting uh, uh, group basically um, set out and said like, hey, that is the intention to also like do it sector specific, but um, it's more or less basically around between like 100 and 130 indicators, which will come uh, come your way, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Then um, let's go into the impact dashboard. Why did we include that in this step? Um, it's definitely that we see that CSRD is seen as like a must for a company, that it's really like, oh shit, we have to fulfill, we have to apply to these governmental rulings. How can we do that? We have to include everyone. How, how should we do it? No, it's actually for you to guide and steer your company uh, in a more holistic way. Like you see here, we create um, really visual attractive um, KPI dashboards on a people, pl uh, planet and profit level so that you can really choose from the KPIs which are developed for the CSRD reporting on which KPIs um, does your company want to grow at and want to have a look at and want to steer um, their company with. Um, and all the other um, indicators um, have to be reported on, but that you have your choice um, and what you look regularly, basically, because that is what will improve um, your KPIs, obviously, and uh, will give you a better goal for this whole um, journey, not as like the CSRD um, reporting, but as a holistic impact dashboard so that you also can do a yearly reporting internally on the KPIs, which are important yeah, to you. We think it's very important uh, that it also adds value. It's not just a yearly report that you have to do, but you can use this data to find yeah. uh, opportunities for your company or risks or at least uh, interesting metrics that you can share. Yeah, and that is what we see, um, what our clients really value working with us because we are one in that sense really flexible on working with them because we have uh, practical tools where we say, hey, you can use that and ask us when, when you need us um, and be a partner in that when it's needed, but not like, hey, here you have your package and uh, you need to get more and more hours. And no, it's like what you need in each of these eight phases. And we also have a data team um, with a move to impact. So we can support you on this like um, journey, not only from the sustainability and innovation part, but really on the data and reporting part and how also these IT structures should look like. Um, so that is definitely important to, uh, to take along in this process because it's not all about uh, sustainability, basically about the ecological and social aspects, but really on like including the financial with the social and ecological aspects in the reporting. Okay, so what are our lessons learned uh, from working uh, already one year on the CSRD element? So I will walk you on each of these um, phases we indicated um, through our lessons learned or one of our lessons learned. So for the project preparation, um, the first one is interdisciplinary but easy. 
please, please, please include directly from the beginning the C level or C suite, however it's called in your company, the HR department, the um, financial department, and also the CSR um, department, but also the head of IT. Because as you see, there are a lot of data structures and definitions are coming. So it's important that um, they are directly included and get your support team rallied around you. Um, so that you have either like um, people as a CSRD project manager or, um, for example, um, ambassadors within your company, which really would like to um, participate in creating a more sustainable company together. But the second part is make it as easy as possible in the sense of like make the language you use as easy as possible, because it's quite a journey, as you see. And it's important that um, the people who never have heard about that, especially in the financial sector or on the operational floor, which then actually have to measure it, that they never have heard about it. So you have to use easy language and that is a really a challenge, but really try it. The second part is uh, current company KPIs. Start with your own and then you have less resistance. So really start with your own KPIs. What do you have already on people, planet and profit that creates a little success moment. And also you start with this like impact dashboard in the end in mind so that um, you really uh, take them along and say like, hey, we tried to create this dashboard. This is the KPIs we are already having. We just add basically uh, during the materiality and the ESRS KPIs. That is all what we are doing. That makes it a little bit easier for them and they see that nothing has to be done just from zero and then go to 100. There is already a lot of in place. The third part, the materiality analysis and KPIs, try to be a smooth operator, as we say, because um, materiality analysis, as uh, yes, it just showed you, has a lot of um, elements in there. Um, so you will especially ask your supply chain about risks and really like nitty gritty question like child labor or um, uh, yeah, like working agreements and all of that. So there can be some resistance. So it is best to approach them already before to say like, hey, we try to make a move towards a more sustainable company. This is coming. Um, uh, we will ask you a couple of questions to really get um, your opinion, because this is with the CSRD um, law is the first time that there is an attempt um, to measure um, social and ecological impact from companies before it was just a financial um, element. So it's really an attempt. So to really ask the market, see what they want. It's an open question. It's not on really the feedback only on your company, but really we try to estimate and try to get there. It is not on like fulfilling this law, but really trying to make a transition to more holistic and uh, uh, well-rounded companies. And I think we are all clever enough to include social, ecological and financial aspects in our reporting. But yes, it takes a little bit and these are the steps for it. So definitely try to be smooth and approach your supply chain before the questions are coming. Then ESRS indicators and KPIs, they are our lessons learned is start simple. Really start with the KPIs, what we just said, with the people, planet and profit. Show um, your company that there are already KPIs um, in there and that all the indicators which are coming from the ESRS, that they are just building on, uh, on top of that. So really start with the three Ps, people, planet and profit, and go from there and not see it as like these 130 things and just divide them a little bit. Then for the connections um, and KPIs, sorry, yes, uh, and measurements, um, it's uh, preparation is key because what is basically done in this phase is a gap analysis between the current company KPIs, materiality KPIs, and the ESRS KPIs. So if you um, basically have a gap analysis, you know that you don't have to do everything from zero, but that you add the pieces, what I just repeated like multiple times. That's a really, really important uh, step. And that's why the three steps before the connection KPIs and measurement are really important. That is the preparation phase, basically, for your company. Then for data collection and measuring, automate the heck out of it. Because it's really, really hard if you start like measuring and putting everything in and Excel sheets, it's like it will be a crime in your head and for your whole company when it's only done with the Excel sheets. So really um, 
try to uh, to do automated data collection and really to put um, a data warehouse together where all the data is connected and automated for your company. Yeah, and uh, I think it's important to add that it's uh, going to be a yearly report. So um, you're going to yeah. have to do this yearly. So might as well automate it. I think that adds a lot of value. Yeah. Um, that is uh, that is that part for that. Um, then make it your own. The impact dashboard we talked about and really use basically the KPIs that give you a smart growth, not just the financial growth, but really what makes sense on a social and ecological sense for you. That all of these elements, um, also the profit element, are um, have a positive influence on each other because it's not only um, ecological and uh, social, it's definitely people, planet and profit. <laughs> um, and then let's start reporting the CSRD report um, that no one knows yet how it completely will be structured. It is definitely a specific um, data structure, which um, is the easiest to connect uh, from a data warehouse so that it's automated basically and uh, usable for the government. These are our eight uh, lessons learned in each of the steps and maybe give you already a little bit of better insight on what to look out for um, on your path. So <clears throat> here we have a little example timeline of CSRD. It's um, a little timeline. I think it's a, a big giveaway for you <laughs> because then you know why we are trying to preach to the choir that uh, you have to start early because you will see now that it's quite some extended uh, timeline. Yes, yes so. <laughs> as, you, as you can see, uh, it's quite busy. Um, we are experiencing that um, at least it takes about a year. And that is uh, in, the, in the timeline that we just have in front of you. Um, obviously, always things are going to happen. Um, but this is this is one example timeline. At least a year. Like uh, if if everything already is really well automated in your data structure and you have already started putting some KPIs in there, then it's a year. Otherwise, it takes longer. Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, the data collection and measuring, the impact dashboard, and the CSRD uh, reporting obviously goes on because it's a continuous process. New data will come in, so new data needs to be in a dashboard and reported. Uh, and that's again uh, what I just said. CSRD is something that has to be done yearly. So we definitely recommend to automate as much of the process as possible. Yeah. So what and what uh, especially I want to bring our attention yeah. to the materiality analysis takes at least uh, or up to six months. So it's not like an analysis you can just like do and it's just done within a month. No, this is the biggest chunk. So really pay attention to it and prepare it well. And it, it takes some time. But then obviously also the data collection and measuring part, defining the, the definitions for um, all the KPIs and making it work for your company. For example, um, if you have like multiple warehouses or are in multiple um, locations and you share, for example, like um, uh, the water um, connection. So you have to figure out how to split the water bills and what percentages are in there. Just give you an example of that. So that takes quite some time to um, not only internally get on your way, but also like externally, like make sure that everything uh, um, is structured and then you are able to get all the data you need yeah yeah we yeah that's very uh, into detail but i definitely agree yeah um and another thing that i, I want to um make note of is that we obviously begin here uh with the um steps that that we know for sure are going to be in, in the csrd yeah. in q1 we will have the final version and that's why we always start with the steps that we know that are going to be there uh for sure those are the no-brainers and then some esrs indicators uh might be adapted yeah. Uh, or might be changed, but, uh, but this, of... this timeline is, is steady. Yeah, yeah, this is this is uh, really steady. So we can just um, urge you basically to start uh, preparing, start talking basically to um, the different levels of your company and really dive into the materiality analysis because like at the moment um, that the indicators will be out, you would be done basically with the materiality analysis. And um, it's always better to start um, with passion than with urgency, <laughs> because like when you're passionate about something, then you are an innovative person, then you can create um, KPIs basically for your sector. And that uh, uh, because um, you will ask also from your supply chain to give you information. And if you um, basically ask for that, um, then you're basically the front runner in it. 
if you um, uh, act out of urgency, it's always extra pressure, extra money, which needs to be um, included. And it's must, mostly like um, done faster and easier to break uh, in the long run. So start early. Start, start <laughs> early. No, wait. Um, I first want to go into um, your questions now, uh, um, because then uh, we can, uh, can hear about you. What are your questions about um, CSRD? and uh, um, all the elements. I just uh, got a sign that I have them already on my phone so I can uh, look uh, um, uh, look them up. Um, uh, okay, I would like to know whether large public organizations, um, university, healthcare institutions, etc., in the Netherlands uh, will eventually have to comply with CSRD, uh, so not only large corporates. Yes, they definitely will have to comply to that. However, um, it's not indicated when this is going to happen yet. So they um, will probably be uh, in the group with the uh, medium and small size companies um, uh, a little bit later than the big corporates at the moment. But this is um, not defined yet. So uh, we um, know that uh, better indicators on these companies come uh, in the beginning of 2023. Mm -hmm. I see another question. What are the differences between CSRD and non-financial reporting? Um, basically, like I said in the beginning, the uh, CSRD is absorbing uh, a lot of the um, earlier reporting requirements. So um, at least listed companies already had to report on sustainability and uh, all these previously uh, sustainability reporting requirements uh, are now absorbed by CSRD. So in that way, CSRD is the follow-up of non-financial reporting. Um, yeah, that answer, answers your question, yeah. I hope. And, uh, and these indicators will come out later, but we definitely took also that into consideration with like building up uh, this timeline. So we know that this is also um, compliant basically with the um, CSRD triple D, so we call it internally, the due diligence, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, that uh, will build basically on that process, what, we're, what you see here in front of you. I also see um, the questions looking at the timeline, etc. It looks like a technical exercise. What are your experience, lessons learned with the cultural behavior aspect in order to really make a change and impact? What I can say about um, this is uh, most of the times it's really like, uh, uh, a question like what I said, like if you include people in the beginning and not uh, make it like, oh, this uh, law is coming, so we have to comply to it, it's always a must. It's like this pressure basically of like, oh, we have to do something because it doesn't, uh, but we don't know for what or why. It needs to have a purpose. That's why we also included the impact dashboard so that it really makes sense that you want to grow as a company and can really build a story around it. That's why we also work with this visual elements so that you in this impact dashboard can tell your story and can say, hey, we want to grow as a company on our social and ecological KPIs. Let's go from there and um, take everyone along in that story instead of the we have to be compliant too, because that's never fun, basically. But actually, like becoming a better company, it's much better and that's actually also the exercise what needs to be done with CSRD. It's much more a positive approach than um, yeah, than actually like what it's made right now at the market because everyone is afraid of it uh, because of the indicators and the not knowing at the moment. The other element of it is uh, um, with the lessons learned and uh, um, the behavior that, um, yes, you can include people and can try to ask them everything, but they don't know either what they really want in this process. So our suggestion is like really get an overview, prepare meetings good with, uh, with employees and give them an overview and examples or um, possibilities and say like, hey, this is what we came up with. Um, what do you think about that? And include them basically in like the nearly final stage of like uh, the KPI so that they can ask you and it's easier for you to define things for them than to ask them and uh, try to collaborate with them to make it easier on the way there. Just give them an overview. Yeah, 
And I think it's good to start with the, uh, like we do here, with the current company KPIs. So we can see what is already being measured. I think that really helps. And uh, as you might have seen, it's very interdisciplinary within the company. Yeah. And I think what really helps is to keep the language simple and yeah. uh, try to make it visual as well. It speaks more than, uh, than a thousand words. <laughs> yeah. Um, I see also the question, um, are there software packages that uh, support the data handling? I read about DeepKey um, and other things. Um, yes, that depends definitely um, on like where your company also on a technical um, standpoint is. So there are like for specific elements are software packages, but not for the complete size. So therefore you would need to contact us uh, um, directly because that depends really on the company um, itself. Um, yeah. Really like, because like you can uh, connect all KPIs together from, if you're a group from different companies, but you also can um, connect uh, specific um, KPIs from, uh, uh, specific social or ecological sectors and then make them transferable or like create can that what you hear the options are endless so please contact us for your questions um on our email addresses yes uh, or scotty at move to impact.com yes and i saw the last question was whether uh big public institutions like universities um or other we organizations already oh we answered yeah, that yeah, one that yeah was, uh, that was already okay answered. perfect yeah, yeah. um yeah, and then what are the differences with the uh, sustainable finance disclosure regulations and uh, the CSRD? The CFDR does not have the EU taxonomy as a basis, hard EG. Do you uh, delve into the, the financial part in that sense as well? Or because that depends also on the on the company itself. Oh, sorry, I was reading the question. <laughs> <laughs> About this one. The difference between substantial. Finance disclosure regulation. Uh, uh, I have to come back on this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have to. Because... Uh, Philip uh, and uh, um, uh, and Rob will definitely come back uh, back to you on these ones as well. What we um, can say on uh, on these elements, what I also said earlier, like everything which is included in the financial reporting and which you put in there, that also have to be reported or explained on in the um, CSRD elements. Um, a couple of these elements, which you're also asking for, is not defined yet um, of the CSRD, and that will also come like the university or um, uh, uh, medical um, institutions that will come in the beginning of next year. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What uh, are there any other questions uh, at the moment? Just looking uh, at uh, the chat. Feel free to. Uh, to uh, to jump in there as well um yeah or unmute yourself hmm. yeah um the <laughs> yes yes i know that these are the the differences indeed uh, of of these two but um since the banks have to do it at the moment like literally they have to do it a year before everyone else but they're doing it right at the moment um so they also have to figure it out at the moment we um don't have a have a bank as a client to to dove into basically the cfdr things but um you are not going to be asked from your banks to do or state or report on any other things than the csrd um, itself they have to report on the sfdrs yeah but we can give you also more information about that but we will send it to you um, directly philip yes um yeah are there any other questions uh, on that um philip did it answer that a little bit i uh, i read a message uh, um specific requirements and how to conduct a materiality analysis, how many stakeholders or external stakeholders must uh, be included. <laughs> um, yeah, give that to you. Yeah, um, so that's a very good question. Uh, the materiality analysis uh, is, is, is a qualitative uh, analysis in that way. Uh, we use quantitative uh, data as well, uh, but how can you determine what is a good materiality analysis or not? Um, Let's go back to your question. 
Uh, are there specific requirements? Yes. Uh, the CSRD now gives you different options to choose from. Uh, you can choose which materiality analysis you want to do. It has to be a double one, but you can. There's several uh, guidelines. For example, one very, um, uh, very uh, famous one is the GR GRI um, global, global Reporting Initiative. Yeah, yeah. Global Reporting Initiative. Uh, it's one way of doing a materiality analysis that we use as well. Um, and that's done mostly worldwide. And then the other one is SASB. Uh, it's also a way. And but basically, the the big lines of the materiality analysis are the same. It's the same steps. There's just some small differences. And right now, CSRD offers you uh, the freedom to choose which type of materiality analysis you want to do. But it has to be according to these guidelines. It has to be a double <laughs> materiality analysis. Um, and to come back to your second question, how do you know if it's good or not? How do you know if you have enough stakeholders? How do you know uh, if you have enough external stakeholders? Are you, do you, do you find, did you find all the topics in your analysis? Um, that's a very qualitative process. I would say, look at your stakeholders, look at all the parties around your company, uh, try to get a few from everyone. Um, we have some example lists as well. Yeah. um which that we can help you with and uh we can review it and see like hey yeah. um okay you have a few out of every group that you think about this group that you think about this group uh and then we can say uh then you can say like okay i have a good spread now yeah so to summarize yes there are requirements the requirements is either do it on the global reporting initiative or the spti standards um, we partnered together uh, with uh, global reporting initiative for our materiality analysis so um, um, our tool is also um, um, getting approved as we speak basically with them uh, so therefore um, you definitely know with our tool that everything is uh, is done from the guidelines also, um, uh, after that, we definitely recommend you to um, uh, get included or have uh, basically an expert for the for the double part, basically for afterwards to uh, uh, link it back basically um, to your company so that you know which trends are at the moment influencing your sector specifically because um, uh, there are different sustainability experts in that. Obviously, if you're more in, in the fashion and apparel sector, then it's more about material and uh, um, and life cycle analysis, what are the elements are there, but then there are sustainability experts on, uh, for example, like uh, digital services and uh, technical waste and all of these elements. So really be specific um, to get your help um, from a sustainability expert um, in your specific field for the materiality analysis. Um, in our phase with the materiality analysis, we help our companies um, in the setting up and doing the analysis and everything. And we have um, uh, 20 associates on the different um, sustainability topics, which basically come in depending on the project um, and what uh, your help is needed basically to uh, yeah, really uh, give you the best expert help in what you need. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's an important step, the benchmarking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, are there any other questions um, coming uh, coming up? Um, you also can uh, um, unmute yourself and just ask a question uh, at the moment, uh, and that's no uh, no problem. Um, if that uh, is not the case, um, we want to show you something and want to. Uh, want to show that because what we learned or what you just hear a little bit it's a lot of like explanation about the different phases including um different stakeholders in it so it's a lot of trying to find the uh, right um, simple words for it and uh, um, explaining the sustainability part but also explaining the technical part as uh, people already mentioned that it's getting quite technical and nitty-gritty so as well the sustainability people as the the operation and also the technical people need more information and need more guidance basically in that. Therefore, um, we are really happy to uh, uh, to announce that and we're announcing that to, to you and uh, you're the first one basically to hear. We are going to um, launch our um, CSRD preparation program um, in November. 
which you can imagine as a, an online university program that you have a guided online step-by-step -step, um, program um, where you have a deep dive in each of the eight phases. You have actions, automated tools and templates for each of the phases so that you know in the preparation phase what should be the actions in that, which kind of support do you need, um, what kind of templates you directly need to present it to your C-level about CSRD, that you have all the right information about it and that you can directly spread it. Also, that makes it possible um, for us to be a flexible partner for you um, as a consultancy because you can do the steps on your own which is needed for your company where you just need some extra additional information. But in each of the eight phases with the actions, automated tools and templates you get on this program, is also the option to ask us for like an extra consult or like for a specific um, workshop so that you can do a lot of the phases yourself, but also have our guideline or have our completely guideline and have this platform to um, include or work in new employees so that they di are directly on top of their game with the CSRD coming in. And especially if you also want to include um, other departments which doesn't know anything about CSRD, but really have to know what it is about, then this platform is absolutely for you because then you don't have to uh, spend hours and hours of talking to them, but really give them a tool to understand and know more about the CSRD process. And it's supports your company and all of the steps that are coming and they will be updated as all the new um, information will come out so it will be always updated yeah. to all of these elements. and there, there will be visuals to communicate internally as well as externally uh and spread the, the message that you want to spread yeah and you probably see already now in the chat um the eventbrite link for this uh for this launch so that you can directly um get uh, enroll for that or uh, get more information about uh, this program obviously um we also do the consultancy part completely so depending on your budget the people you have available and um, also your knowledge about csrd and the preparation um, you can basically mix and match basically about um, our, mm -hmm. our obviously we do uh, all the steps as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but we see there's a lot of uh demand from the market because a lot of companies are already measuring some parts so yeah. we get a lot of questions like hey can we do certain steps ourselves and yeah. can you do certain steps so in this way um i think we uh, we found a really nice uh, tool to support the client and help them where needed yeah and I just uh, got uh, the question, how can we get in contact? Um, here um, are our contact details. You can either call us or can uh, send yes or me um, uh, a message. Also in the chat are our LinkedIn contacts. So if you want to add us basically on LinkedIn, send us a short message with your <laughs> um, with uh, your question about CSRD so that um, we also can answer some more or want to get to know a little bit more what uh, what we are doing and supporting people in that. Yeah, that uh, that is about this webinar. Um, thank you so much uh, for tuning in, everyone. Contact us about your questions and write uh, enroll in the launch for our CSRD preparation program or send a link to people who definitely are in need to start preparing themselves for it. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, we wish you a good preparation time for CSRD and we hope this webinar helped you um, to get more insights uh, about, uh, about CSRD.